All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you uh, as usual from a bit gloomy San Diego this morning, but it'll, the sun will come out later. And today I'm delighted to be joined from the Netherlands by Stefan Schmulders. How are you doing, Stefan? Hey, John, thanks for the nice introduction. Yes, I'm, do I'm doing actually great. It's already evening, but I'm, I'm pumped to be a guest in, the, in your show and have a nice conversation. Yeah, and, and so Stefan is the co-founder of Expandy, uh, expandy.io, and we're going to talk about how you bootstrapped your way to 6 million in ARR. And for those of you who don't know what ARR, that's uh, annual run rate, or I'm sorry, uh, annual recurring revenue in just... 50 uh, in just 17 months so zero to six million in 17 months and uh, a a annual uh, recurring revenue uh, of of six million just unbelievable so stefan tell us your secret first of all tell us a little bit about expand.io what the genesis of it how you created it and then how you had how you've managed to pull off this amazing growth with bootstrapping yeah yeah, first of all, uh, yeah, again, my name is Stefan. I'm located in the Netherlands and indeed the co-founder of Expandi. I think if you go a bit more back in time, and then I started five years ago another software SaaS. It's a local software, but it's called Lead Express. It's actually a very intelligent IP tracking software, similar like tools as you all know, Albert Cross, Lead Forensics, Lead Feeder, where we can identify website visitors. We tried to grow that company on a normal way with traditional marketing and paid advertisements. We did not a bad job, but it wasn't that great as well. And I think the main challenge in there is that everybody likes to see who's visiting the website, but it's a nice software to have because the challenge after is that everybody wants to get calls and appointments and people actually do not know how to do. So they try to pick the phone, they call to the reception, hey John, it's Stephanie here. I saw some of your colleagues visited my website. Can you please forward me to them? Stefan, I really don't know what you are talking about. Yeah. And then it answered. The customers are blaming to me. Stefan, you have a nice software, but it's not working for us. So that challenged me more than four years ago to see if I could find a new way to do acquisition on a much more modern way. I jumped into LinkedIn with just 43 connections at that time point. I never, ever used it for a commercial perspective before, until then. So to push myself a bit harder, I thought, let's subscribe myself for the sales navigator. And actually, I was immediately in love. By using all these filters, I could easily find my ICP um, and my target audience. The only mistake I made that it was actually not that easy to approach these people. Yeah. I was maybe a bit of too enthusiastic in terms of uh, 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 selling myself. Hey, I'm Stefan. I'm that cool guy. I can help you with any, everything and <laughs> it will not cost that much money. So um, I need the, to do my homework a bit better. And I invested in the upcoming three months all my available time in understanding how can I contact and engage with people on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. After three months, it became my number one lead channel. The only challenge you can imagine was that I was totally running out of time with making all these manual connections and follow-up messages. Right. So yeah, I thought, let's be clever and try to find some software which can automate some repetitive tasks on LinkedIn. And that's what I did. And you can believe me, I've tried out all the tools out there in the market, from Bugsook to LinkedIn Helper to Meet Leonard, Alfred, Phantom Buster, and so on and so forth. The challenge with all of these tools is that most of them have a really nice and impressive features, but they are most likely designed for single users. Actually, people who want to run and operate their own profile, one campaign. And besides of that, we all know that it's a bit of a gray area because LinkedIn is not that amused with all these third party apps out there on the market. No, no. So people want to use automation to speed up their sales process. And on the other side, nobody wants to get in problems with LinkedIn. Yeah, and, so, and as you know, as you know, and, and as you know better than I do, but as you know that I mean that has become a bigger and bigger issue for you know people who, as you said, like they're using these automation tools and suddenly they're getting suspended or some people even kicked exactly. off for good and all of that stuff. So um, yeah, I mean it's a real challenge. Yeah, and that that's what I found out as well. And 
I was actually as a next step trying to help some of my complaining customers from my previous software to follow up their identifications and to try to get them on appointments. With all of the softwares I just mentioned, I think beside the fact that they are not all that safe and that LinkedIn could catch them at that time mm -hmm. point, uh, they are also not that seamless because you always have to open your laptop. They are not running in the cloud. And as soon as you close anything, it will stop the automations. Beside of that, we all struggle with managing the LinkedIn inbox, especially oh. if we are doing a lot of outreach. If you refresh your LinkedIn inbox, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable, but you can't find any conversation back. Yeah, and, so, and, and Stefan, I say since LinkedIn introduced that auto email reply, it's uh, yeah. your, your inbox just, you know, which drives me kind of crazy. Or when you, when somebody gives you a nice connection message and then you, you say, okay, I'll connect. And then it's ping, you get yeah. the auto. So yeah, the, the LinkedIn uh, inbox is a bit of a mess. Yeah. And that's, that's boring actually a lot of people. So mm -hmm. At the end, I could not move forward with using all these, yeah, these tools as a starting agency. So I shared all my frustrations with my technical co-founder, Glenn, and he just told me, let's build our own tool. Let's make it real safest software out there. We make it cloud-based. We provide every user with a dedicated and country-based IP. So nobody has to be worried anymore about getting in troubles with LinkedIn. And on the other hand, we try to implement all the features I need for agency perspective to manage actually tons and tons of accounts on a seamless, safe way in the cloud with all the features you need to do a better job and improve and increase your LinkedIn outreach game. That was what we did. And we launched our first beta locally in the Netherlands uh, somewhere around the summer of 2019. And I thought, let's be clever and approach all the people who are using my Lead Express software to see if these ones could be in great fit. So actually the first thing I did with my team was diving into demo calls with all of them. And I found out that people were open to actually try out the tool. But first I had to sell LinkedIn because they were not that active on LinkedIn. If I sold LinkedIn, then I needed to sell automation. And after I sold automation, they came back after trying it for two weeks. Actually, I do not know what to send and how I can improve my game. So I thought that's not the way to go. If we want to scale really, really fast, we have to launch it globally and we have to find a better niche. So what we did is that we did all these 300 beta users an offer to actually gather some money and prepare ourselves for a global launch. So we offer them an annual subscription for a lower amount, and we granted them to help them with making messages and templates and sequences. We gained from that action around 50K. And it helps us to prepare our global launch, which we did mid-November 2019. And the first thing we did is that I saw that all these providers out there, more than 400 tools pretend to do some automated tasks on LinkedIn, they are actually hiding themselves from LinkedIn. And yeah. the second thing is that people who are managing more profiles like agencies and growth hackers, they need to know who's actually behind that software and they want to build a proper relationship. So we took advance of these both things and made that our USPs, beside the fact that we pronounce ourselves as real safest software for LinkedIn automation. Right. And the first thing to gather our clients was that I scraped the community base from a Facebook group from our competitor. And so we joined that group, we scraped all the people in there, we converted with other tools like text out these email addresses into LinkedIn profiles. We uploaded the CSV with LinkedIn profiles into Expanding, and we start running outreach campaigns to these people. Hey, my friend, we are both members of the same group. I'm using that tool as well. Let's share some valuable insights. Right. And after these people accept the connection request, we ask them a small feedback because we were struggling with using these kind of tools and we built and tool ourselves, but before we launched it, we needed actually some feedback from reliable and experienced right, users right. like all of them. 
that was what we did. And it gained us more than 40 appointments per week uh, as a starting point. So what we did as a next step is that we wrote down all our own experiences and how we use actually our own tool expanding to gain so many appointments. But, uh, so, so as a next step, we wrote an in-depth step-by-step guide how we did that. And I started to post a really great content on LinkedIn where right. I made a little bit of a drama post. LinkedIn outreach is that nobody's replying to messages. <laughs> if you want to do a better job, we'll got you covered how to get a 70% acceptance rate and 40 booked appointments per week. The whole playbook we will share with you if you leave a comment. And let's be honest, normally only maybe my wife, two friends and four <laughs> colleagues will like such a post. So yeah, yeah. it was in the early days of the engagement pods, which we used to get more traction on that post. And our first post got more than 160K views and wow. thousands and thousands of comments wow. with an impressive feature in expandi where we could easily within three mouse clicks scrape all the people who liked and commented that post it was an easy job for us to approach these people afterwards and to share the content that's what we did and that's actually what we still do we try to provide people with tactics mm. and strategies we've executed ourselves to grow so fast to give people actually the knowledge on how to use such kind of a third party apps like expanding. Mm -hmm. There are tons of tools out there in the market, but everybody's struggling with the content, with the messages, but also with the targeting. And that's yeah. where we're helping people with. Our blog became the CNN of LinkedIn lead generation with more than 50K unique readers per month. Wow. So we rely a lot on inbound marketing. Mm -hmm. So how does so tell me a little bit about uh, okay so I mean you did that which is amazing and yeah uh, we all know about uh, everybody starts off and starts to dump a lot of money into Google Ads when they're starting their business and end up yeah. losing a lot of money and Google make a lot of money um, so uh, so it's amazing what you did but tell me then uh, tell me a little bit more about how Expandy actually works and what makes it different from the others. Yeah, beside uh, uh, the safety fact. Yeah, which I know. I mean, and I wouldn't underestimate this. Obviously, the safety <clears throat> is the most critical thing because yeah. you people, because let's face it, uh, if you've ever, and you probably have talked to people who've been suspended or even permanently suspended by LinkedIn, it's really difficult to get back on. That's, yeah, that, that's actually the case. So you sell fear. That's, that's, that's I think, the first thing. And the second thing where we differentiate ourselves is in terms of features is that we did a great job in automate almost everything possible. But it, at the end, always starts with the targeting. The better mm -hmm. job you can do in the targeting, the better the results will be. So for example, we have features where you can, where actually Expandi allows you to scrape each and every post on LinkedIn and import all the people who liked and commented on a post. So let's say if you're going to do a simple search in your basic search bar and you search by hashtag on a keyword which match your business topic, then you can imagine that if you find a reliable post, that all the people who engage with that post might could be interested in your approach or things so you it have doesn't it so it doesn't it's not it doesn't have to be your post right it's just no post. it can be anyone's post right and the same you can do for polls so if you create a poll on linkedin we can import all the voters from your own poll what we also can do is linkedin is also full of events especially since the COVID kicked in uh, things moving to yeah, especially online. Mm -hmm. So you see a lot of events are hosted on LinkedIn and you can search them on the same easy way, just by a simple hashtag in the basic search bar. And then if you find an event by keyword, which match your business topic and you attend that event, then the only thing you have to do is to copy the event URL, pass it in Expandi, Give it three minutes and we will grab all the people with LinkedIn profiles and every additional information available to 
import that in Expandia and use it as a starting point to engage with people. I think that's that's a very valuable asset, especially oh, yeah, that's, because that's incredible. Yeah, because yeah, the simple fact that LinkedIn is growing so fast with more than 700 million, seven, yeah, 700 million active users on the platform. Their main challenge is the spam. Oh, let's yeah. be all. Let's be, be, yeah, be honest as well. Everybody was used to doing outreach on a certain way where we only were focused on just running a simple sales nav search with just a filter as a location and a job title. And then from there on, just dropping an X amount of people in a campaign. And then there was always be an outcome. But people are slowly leaving the platform because it's overused with the spray and the prey approaches. So we all noticed, I guess, that LinkedIn is cracking down in terms of numbers. Yep. It means that you can only send 100 requests per week. And if that's the case, then you have to do a better job on the targeting. Yep. So the better searches you can make with the examples I just shared, and the more qualified the audience will be, and the high, and yeah, it will actually increase the chance to approach them. And beside all the facts that we can personalize everything with images and GIF animations and to make it more human. Mm -hmm. So, so what's your next, so once you, you know, once you find the targets, um, what's, what's the process then for the elegant engagement with, with your target? Yeah, you can, uh, we, we, we have a drag, uh, drag and a drop editor where you can actually build whole workflows and scenarios. So let's say we're going to, have a starting point where we scrape people which attend a specific event, and we're gonna use these people as an input, as a source. Mm -hmm. uh, from there on, we can say, okay, let's visit first all these profiles. And if these people visiting back within two days, then we want to like the latest posts. And from there on, we can say, okay, as a next step, we want to follow these people. And from there on, we can say, okay, let's see if it's a, a profile has an open status. And if that's the case, we can send a free open email and without using credits. And if the profile is not open, we can grab the email address. And because we have a native uh, uh, email integration by SMTP, uh, we can send an email. And if they not reply on the email within a specific or certain amount of days, then we can say, okay, then I want to try to make a connection request. So you can actually design different workflows and scenarios to increase the chance to engage more with these people on a human way. And every time if you like a post or you follow somebody or you endorse somebody, the receiver will get a notification. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because, yeah, because a lot of systems is... Uh you know, find the people and then, you know, uh, visit their profile and then fire off a connection request immediately. Yeah. So what you're talking about is you're really talking about warming it up with, with, uh, you know, with the right actions, you know, not doing too much at once. Correct. And I think that's the best way to go and to be a bit more careful with all these limitations mm, and to yeah. create more, uh, more you. Yeah, and so um, with this with this phenomenal growth that you've had uh, in the last while, so what is what challenges has growth uh, presented for you? Because we all love growth and it's fantastic and it's, it's yeah. amazing what you guys have done, but it always comes with a couple of challenges out of left field that you weren't expecting. Yeah, that's that's definitely for sure. And all of these challenges, you could I, I could not even imagine in the beginning that we should face them. By the way, I could not even imagine that we should achieve such a such a, a, a fast growth in, in yeah. such a small period of time. But I think we started with, with for example, seven colleagues. We are now at 32, you know, 32 colleagues in the team and actually operating as a kind of a solo entrepreneur in the beginning, together with my technical co-founder, Glenn. Right. And we have to manage the company. We have to uh, 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 get more processes in place to track all these things and actually trying to bring the company to a scale up which needs more expertise than we can do ourselves. So mm -hmm. that's actually the main challenge we 
facing right now. And I think the only solution for that is to bring new people on board, which already deal with such kind of a jobs. Yeah, and, and one of the interesting things nowadays is that you know, we're seeing, and we do it ourselves too, is that uh, you have the you have such great options today when you're scaling a company is that people always think, oh, I need to hire a load of people immediately. You know, I need to bring them on board. Um, but the reality is, is that there's a lot of very specific or, or um, highly skilled tasks that you may need somebody to do, but you don't need them to do it full time. So you can do the hybrid of hiring core staff that you really need and then using contractors from across the globe because it's become so easy to work with people who've got the skill set you need for specific projects or specific tasks. Totally agree on that. And I think that's what we're going to see much more in the future is the kind of hybrid organization, that combination of core and then uh, variable. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. So, um, so Stefan, um, this has been really, really interesting. And all of Stefan's information is going to be below this video and, and links to um, expandy.io and all of that good stuff. But before we go, is there anything else you'd like to share with the audience? Um, I think for, for the ones who consider to improve their LinkedIn outreach game, and at the end, it's, it's, it's not a matter about which tool you should pick along all the available providers. It's actually the food you put in to bring in and get the results. So I think for the ones who consider to do a bit more with LinkedIn, I should strongly recommend to read my blog page. It's, more, it's, it's filled with more than 50 in-depth step-by-step guides about different strategies which I've executed all myself with real examples, with real templates and uh, uh, exercises on how you can connect the dots. So that will give a bit of a more insight on how you can operate on LinkedIn a bit of out of the box then, instead of only and just making simple connection requests. Because that, that, there's a lot to discover. And if you want to do it the right way, I, in my believing, it starts with with learnings and I made tons of mistakes and I only put in the blog the great results after uh, <laughs> tons of, of learnings, of course. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I recommend for people to get advanced of that if they want to do and be more active on LinkedIn. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I'm just looking at the blog here. There's a lot of fantastic stuff on it. So all of that, we will, we will link to expandy.io so you can go there and I would highly encourage you to do it. Um, I think, as you said, uh, LinkedIn has become a little bit messy. They're cracking down a lot. It's really going to serve you very well to take a thoughtful approach to this. And this looks like an amazing tool to do that with because, let's face it, if you do things well on LinkedIn, you're going to stand out today because 90% of it is bad yeah. behavior. <laughs> so true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, thanks again, Stefan. Thank you for joining us uh, from the Netherlands. My name is John Golden. I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.